Welcome to Dream TV. This is Dream, your humble host. So, here is the new recorded look um, for now. I'm thinking of doing a couple other things, but this is what it looks like for now. So, what do you think? You think it, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. So, um, there's another thing I want to do, but I'm not going to do it on this video. I'm going to do it on the next video. That way you guys can come back and see the next video. Um, so, go ahead, and this is your first time here. Go ahead and like and subscribe. And, uh, yeah, um, there's a little bell you can hit and follow me. That way you're notified whenever I uh, upload a new video or go live, which I do quite quite frequently. So what we're doing tonight is I'm going to give some tips, suggestions, and thoughts about team domination and things like that. So what we're, we're, we're just going to jump right in. First of all, for those who don't know, when you're playing WWE Supercard, everything is based on your ranked deck. Okay, all your picks, everything. Okay, your board for team domination is also what you get from here. So, like when you pick off of this board, um, you give me a second, I'll win this and or lose this, whichever. Um, I notice I have not updated this, so this could be easy, could be hard, depending on which way you think of it. Okay, so tag. I uh, I should win this, so. but anyways. So what you're looking for is to get your board down to the least amount of cards you can, without actually getting a reset. This could be down to four cards, eight cards if you're using doublers because you might need that. You know. So uh, what we do is we go through the board and I'm going to show you. I've been working on this trying to get the board down. I haven't got it all the way down yet so I'm in the process. So you see I have knocked this down to six, eleven pieces. Okay. Now we're down to nine. Okay. Now you can do this with nine. Okay. You just have to use the doubler. Okay. Um, but when right before team the team domination starts, you go ahead and you get your board down as far as you th you comfortably can. If you think you're going to hit a you know a reset a rare, you know a rare or something, then don't. Then don't go any further. Stop. Go to your team battleground when it starts. And then you can actually save up picks um, by closing out your game and then come back and play, close out your game. That way, the next time you come in and you have to reset your board, you know, get your board down. Because you can do this, you can use this to take your boards down. That way, every time you play a game, you're going to get a shard. But it takes a little bit of time because you gotta go through, get your get your board down to where you can do that. And sometimes you accidentally hit a reset. As a matter of fact, often you will hit a reset, and and it'll frustrate you, and you have to go through and do it all over again. So I'm I'm hoping that I don't do that in this video because that would be kind of kind of uh, not where I wanted to go with this. I'm trying to do this to show you how to do this, but if I mess it up, then I mess it up and I have to come back and start over and do it all over again. But we go ahead and we get rid of as many as we can. So right now we're at nine. So we're at 11, we did two, now we're at nine. And now we're gonna try to do two more to get us under eight, okay? Okay, we're under eight now. Okay, now I'm not going to do any more because I, I can do it with eight. Okay, I feel comfortable with that. Oh, so you come over to your event. Okay, I have a bonus uh, thing, a doubler, so I'm going to get eight picks when I if I win. And now I'm going to talk to you about the game itself. Here's a suggestion for the game itself. First of all, with Team Domination, you have the cards that your team has, so that's just the cards you get. Okay, that means the manager cards. Whenever there's manager cards, 
kick your your points off right away. And then you got to look at your cards itself, which ones go right, left, up, and down. Okay. So you're going to want to put your lowest card in that you can find. So I'm thinking it's going to be this John Cena. And I have two up and one down, so I want to go up just in case. Okay, so like, okay, so now he's going to, if he takes this card, um, I don't think he's going to. But if he was to have taken it, I would have used my up arrow, one of my up arrows, to take this card back. Okay, most likely I probably would have ended up having to use the Roman Reigns card to do it. Okay. So next you hit the other the other one if it's a deck thing to multiply in and you take and you block it off. Okay? Now remember, you're just doing enough to make sure that they can't take anything back. Okay, here we're gonna drop that there because not only does it block it off, you take that card. Alright, and then you see now they can't get to either corner card, so I automatically will have to. Automatically. And you're going to want to do this pretty much for every game. Now, there is another strategy, and I could show you that if you want. Or I, I will show you that, but it's not it's not as effective as this in winning because you leave yourself open if you don't have the right combination, the right strategy, and they have better cards. Then you end up losing. This way, at least you can block off cards. Like that, if I, if I had a card that I couldn't use, but it didn't have, didn't wouldn't have taken that, and it was really low, I could have put it in that one in that left corner where I put card angle, and uh, it would have been it would have been better because then I have a low card on there and they can't get to it. Okay, this I can't you know I can't get to him, so I'm just gonna go ahead and end this one. Okay, and then I should be able to get the shard okay and as you can see I won so I'm gonna get my eight picks and the board is just what we had when we left the other one it looks exactly the same so we're gonna go through and we're just gonna pick these out until we find the reset the shard you know it's a good thing I didn't keep going because I would have just kept going around and this would have been the next card that I would have picked and it's a shard it's another pig doubler so now I have to go back now I can go back and, and do it again I can go back and reset the board if I so choose or I can just keep playing now that I have a shard um, the more shards you get the better you are you know the better off you are so what we're going to do is we're going to go in here. I'm going to teach you the other strategy. This is more for the advanced type players, the one that has the the better cards in their decks, and yeah, you know, you have the the cards showing that you can do. Okay, this one's going to be a little more difficult um, because I only have one arrow down. And I don't have any up, and I have three right, two left. So I'm going to go ahead and use this uh, Randy Orton. I'm going to put him in the middle. All right, now he's going to go, and he's going to take it, okay? Then I'm going to take it back. Okay, this is also how you get, so you wouldn't, like, you, if you could do this in your own, dominate, ring domination. And this is how you get your card uh, games played as well, because he got games for that match, okay? Okay, I guess I don't have to take it back. Um, so what, what we'll do instead is we'll go ahead and block it down here since we don't have an up arrow if he's gonna take it he's gotta take it from the top and then I can take it back and block it off so we're just gonna block it down there because I don't have an up arrow because if he goes down I go over and he can come up and take it from me and we didn't want that so um, his rooster went ahead and took that which is okay um, because we can also come back and try to take it back Power and speed, I think it got him on this. Yeah. So I've taken his card back. Now, I'm not going to be able to get the Randy Orton back because I don't have an up card to get it. I don't have an up card for that. So we're going to go ahead and block this off. 
and then we will go ahead and finish this out and see and I still won I won six to three and my card got a couple games on it um, our game on it because he didn't have the he didn't want to try to take it back after he lost the first time or he didn't have the cards now if you have a smaller card they will take it you will take it they will take it you will take it and then you'll end up with four sets of games or four games on your on your your cards that you're trying to level up now I'm just telling you I probably won't get a pick here or a shark because I, I didn't whittle the board down which is fine um, I would just come back and play another game and another game and another game and I would I would end up getting my picks and uh, getting my my cards down so this is that is a easy way to get shards in Team Battleground or Team Rogue, uh, Ring Domination. Now this doesn't now the, this doesn't work in your own Ring Domination because it doesn't go off your board. It, it, you're picking shards off the card to find the pieces of the card, so that doesn't work there. But on Ring Domination for the team event, it works, and your 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 the people will thank you for being you know, getting 17 shards and things like that. So and I want to thank Ant for. Uh, trucking along and doing that 17 shards because we're actually all of us have to do quite a bit um, if we're going to hit it because we're down to eight people and you got to get 100 shards so 100 divided 100 I think it's 100 100 shards divided by eight yeah so you're looking at 12 13 apiece so so we'll just do it one more time um, that way you can we can get this solidified a little more about how to how to do the first strategy which is usually the strategy that beginners use um, it's actually the strategy I use as well in a lot of mine so we're going to go ahead and put John Cena right here okay he's going to go over there which means we can do this no no one do that we can do this okay we're going to take his Brock he's and we give ourselves another card up there that if they try to take it then they're going to get lost they're going to lose and they're going to lose a card but the thing is, they're probably not going to take the Kurt Angle card. They'll do everything they can to avoid it. Um, but that's, they'll actually probably, you know, I thought maybe they'd go after the Brock card. They did not. Um, let's go ahead and... Uh, I doubt it. I doubt it. There we go. I knew it. I knew it. I just knew it. I had a feeling it was going to be toughness. Um, so I ended up losing that one. That's no problem. I still have the rest of my cards, and there's no way he's going to be able to beat all of my cards. Um, especially when I just go ahead and do that. And now he has four. I have four. I push this here, and it's game over. I still win. Okay, um, that one was a little different strategy because he didn't go after your card. Um, so you just, you have to kind of play a little bit with those. You can either keep blocking off your card, you know, and don't worry about his. Or you can try to do what, you know, do what I did. Ooh, I got a shard. Uh, bad card, but good shard. Um, you can do what I did and kind of try to take his card and plan around it. Especially if you think that you have a card that they're going to leave you alone. Like that. So that in a nutshell is kind of the way you want to you know, play team, you know, team ring domination. That way you can get your cards and do everything you can to help your team win out. Um, to be a good teammate, you want to show team loyalty. And getting shards as quickly as you can and as many as you can very quickly that's that's a good way to show your loyalty to your team it's also usually required by teams um like okay like on the line it says battle club inc rd 10 rtg 200 team battleground a thousand that right there is ring domination team ring domination you are required to have 10 shards or you can get kicked. Okay, now I've seen ones where they're 15 and 20, and that's because what they do is they get their 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 big card, then they drop down to the next one and do it again. 
and those teams are the successful teams. Our team, I'm still trying to work out the bugs and figure out what's going to happen with the team. Um, I'm trying to find the grinders like Int and Snow, who constantly over go above and beyond to try to help this team out to get to get the cards that we need. And other people just don't do their job. They don't do their part. And it gets a little frustrating. And that's when teams don't look at you the right way. So if you're going to be a part of a team and you're going to do these events, make sure you do these events in a way that can help your team. Okay. And also make sure that when you're doing these type of things, you know, doing these events, that you're thinking about the team. And don't be just be like, well, I got five. I, that's okay. Um, they'll, they won't, you know, they'll be okay with that. Because a lot of people will look at you and go, you only got five? I got 25. Why couldn't you do better? And that's that. then you start getting a bad rap because there's, a, there's spots out there, YouTube videos. I mean, like, I guarantee you. If somebody's getting kicked off my team, I'm blasting them here on YouTube. That way you know, or people know, that these are the people that you don't want in your team. So, anyways, I want to say thank you for coming and watching this video. I am hope I hope I helped you out in some way. And I hope that you continue to play and you bring yourself into the wonderful world of WWE Supercard. Especially for those who are just starting out and beginning players, find a team. Help, do as do whatever you can to help your team. If your team is not active, find another team. If you're in an active team, do whatever you can to stay there, because active teams, especially grinding active teams, are hard to come by. Um, those spots don't come open very often because the people actually grind, and they and they all stay together because they all grind. And they can get the cards repeatedly over and over. So, so finding them people to actually want to grind this game. And actually want to play this game for a long time. Because it, it's not easy. This this game takes hours and hours to play correctly. If you're going to be a part of a grinding team. So if you're not going to do that. You just tell the people off the bat. Hey, I'm, I, I, I play. I will get you know whatever I can. But I'm not a grinder. I don't play for hours and hours upon end. Let them know, hey, this is not my focus in my life. Okay, if if it's a grinding team, then they're going to say, well, then you're not you're not in the right team for us, and they will wish you a, a good luck, and you can go try to find another team. Because I guarantee you, if you join that team and you don't do what they do, they're going to yell and scream at you. Um, so, just for your future reference, just find somebody, you know, find a team that's similar to your. The way you play and you'll be okay so anyways thank you all for joining me hit that like and subscribe button and uh dream on and dream out